live from Kakariko Village. Broadcast throughout the Retroverse Transmitted to the real world via a maze of wires Connecting a Super Nintendo to a Wii To a Wi-Fi network And finally to the internet The Techno Funk Boy presents The Retro Zoo Super Show Here are your hosts, Kai and Steven. Oh, look! Hey, he's coming out. Who? The, the, the doctor! I thought he wasn't gonna be here for another five minutes. Well, I, there he is! Okay, what should we do? What should we say? What? Just let's, let's go ask about drum! I don't. I don't know, man. I don't know if I can ask about it. Okay. Well, I'll. I'll, I'll, I'll all right. Let's. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay back a little bit. I'm gonna <laughs> let you keep talking. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, doctor. Yes. Doctor. Uh, yeah. Just. Uh, um, how, how's it going with drum? It's everything. Well, yeah. Uh, no. I um. I appreciate y'all waiting out here, and uh, taking the time to to show your support. It's kind of awkward. I'm just a VCR repairman. Not actually a doctor. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sorry. I keep doing that. I'm sorry. Well, I like to pretend like I'm a doctor sometimes, but uh, the fact remains, I'm just a VCR repairman. So, mm. uh, you're asking about your little robot friend. Uh, yeah, Drum. If I'm, if I'm right. correct. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Drum. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, we, my si- assistant and I, we, we spent several hours um, doing a, a full diagnostic of his inner circulatory membrane, and we realized that the spark connector on the fusillation module was a little bit exasperated. And so we uh, opened up the ramificator, and we noticed that the, there was a spongulation there. So that led me to believe that this has been tampered with, and that and there are some extensive, yes. Really? Extensive tampering. <clears throat> Exit? Wow. Now, oh. when you reconnect the Heisenberg compensators to the galactic indicator, you've got this ritual that happens. It's kind of a transverse population of the cranium. And now and, and, and that can mean that someone has tried to maybe work a soul. Work a what? A soul into this robot. Now that is very dangerous. The ghost in the shell. This is the axillary medium to relieve a ghost from a shell and so we need to be careful here because the as a vcr repairman the ethics of artificial intelligence and uh releasing a ghost into a shell is a very ambiguous and nebulous might i say quantoplastic endeavor so be careful here it looks like somebody one of y'all has has been tampering with soul-like components Soul. I, okay, I don't. Steven, would you? Steven, you. Man, dude, I don't know what he's talking about, man. Okay, well, I, I mean, I, I guess, I, I guess the point is, and and we really do appreciate the time, Doc. I, I mean, oh, Mister, oh yeah, no, no, no problem. Um, but uh, you know, it's you it's actually it, it's actually it was really hard finding somebody who is that familiar with you know eighties technology. Um, but but yeah, really. I, so so can can we do something? And and, and I mean. Can uh, are uh, are, are you going to be able to help him? Well, we've done what we can, and now we can't remove a soul. Is there? Um, you know, we, we, are, so, there is a seedling of a soul growing inside this robot, but I'm unable to remove that 
because it goes against my VCR repairman Hippocratic ethics oath. So you have an oath? That's great. You know, it's this and here in Hyrule we do VCR repair. We do it to another level. Um I do want to suggest that Drum get as much rest as he possibly can. He needs to probably be unplugged just deriving energy from his sleep mode on his lithium ion uh sleep batteries. So do not activate them. Maybe maybe for this episode. I know I see y'all have y'all's recording equipment and, and everything, and I know I've, I'm a fan of your show. Everybody here in Hyrule is. Oh, thanks. That's a, that yeah. means a lot oh. to me. I appreciate oh, that. No. Oh. You know, might might get your autograph afterwards for my kids. But, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, m- mostly, I just think he needs rest, and he needs maybe some chicken noodle soup. Okay. Well, I feel like you know this episode's not really going to have have really any sort of tension or 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 force behind it if there's not something that you need to be working on for about an hour well in that case i i'm I'm thinking you can um get you probably leave drum (laughs) sorry Drum can probably remain in, in, in just a media, mediocre uh, mode where, while he is in this episode, just okay. to perform his basic functions. And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna is, say, is he, is he any, any danger for the next hour so that there might be some like tension that the audience is, is really concerned about him? Um, I think not. I think that, like Could, I said, just... Are you well, sure? Uh, that, I mean... I mean, he's not, he might not. I mean, it, it's like not possible that he'd explode after about fifty-two minutes. That is possible. That is, po- Stephen. I think we got to wait it out, dude. I don't know, man. I, I, uh, I'm getting really nervous here, Doctor. He sounded like he was. He, it sounded like you were trying to. You were about to say that he was going to be fine, and now you're changing the story. It's, it's he could explode. Well, I have to give all possible possibilities. And it does appear that his radioactive blendimator is Oh, the blendimator. The blendimator. You know. I know, I know, I know. It's just, it's hard. It's hard. The blendimator is a fragile piece of equipment. And when it is teetering on the brink of total desynchronization, the blendimator could trickle down into the lower bowels of of drums internal lining and and cause a blendomastic explosion which would affect the uh, actually greater part of high rule and uh maybe create a tiny black hole wow. so yeah it's just a mm. serious thing i mean yeah. I, I wanted to paint it as a beautiful picture first but but the blendomator issue might be something we should we should all hang on for about 52 minutes while i while i perform you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I got to get the cotton swabs out of my trunk and put some alcohol on them and yeah. clean around the blendimator. And then, wow. you know, maybe if I can reposition it, that'll take me a little bit of time. Let me get my assistant to do that. And then in the meantime, I'm just going to need y'all to wait here. OK. OK. All right. Well, that's good. That's good, Doc. I appreciate that. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. we'll we'll wait here. Mm. Oh. Well, I'm going to oh. be gone and I'll, 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 I'll send my uh, assistant out with any news. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Ah, oh, gosh. You know, you, I... Did you hear that? The blendimator? I didn't even know you had a blendimator. Yeah, no, that's... Uh, and, and I, you know, and I think this is... This is what happens when... I, I, I mean, I, I, somebody... Somebody has been mixing robotics with anime plot lines. And that's just... That's not going to work. It's... Uh, yeah, generally you can't do that unless no. you have a transfusal relation. I I didn't know that. Yeah, but I don't. Oh gosh, I mean, who who would who would be trying to like infuse drum with a soul? You think a soul? I don't know. I mean, Murd would Murd. Now Murd's not subtle enough for that. We haven't found him yet, have we? No, no, we um, 
I left some glue traps out. We'll oh, see. good. Yeah, when good. we get back, maybe he, he stumbled into one. Yeah, that'd be great. You, know, you can turn completely invisible, but you can't step. You can't. Uh, that doesn't keep you out of a glue trap. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Oh well, I guess we're just gonna. Uh, I guess we're gonna sit and wait. Um, I don't know, You're man. The- what What have you been up to? Oh man. Honestly, before this whole drum fiasco, I was um, trying to sell weapons cases on Steam. Okay, thank you for adding the on Steam part. <laughs> we were going, I mean, directly from, from retro gaming into arms dealing here. Well, wait, what? So, what is, like, uh, what, what do you mean by this? I, I'm I'm unfamiliar. Okay, so so actually, it's a kind of retro game, but Counter Strike um, is originally a retro game. I think there's a there's an old version of it. What I that I used to play when I was a kid, and now they, they they've come out with it since then. They've come out with Counter Strike Global Operations and or, or CS Go as it's uh, referred to in the community. But it's uh, it's a first person or shooter. Go. Sco. That's how I hear it a lot. Sco. I might go with that actually. I might try to get that going. <laughs> You're not gonna sell anything if you start referring. To- it's like, yeah, I got this. I got this weapon. Case. I got this weapon case for Sco. <laughs> Are you interested? It's worth a lot. It's worth a lot of money. So believe it or not, okay. So Steam has its own currency, right? It's uh, it's you can't you put money into Steam and it becomes Steam money and you can't get it back out. I don't think crypto, huh? Uh, it's. Gear. I don't know if it's blockchainy, but it's <laughs> definitely uh, it's, it's it's its own money. So wow. so here's the th- here's the thing. I've been playing since this. I've been playing CS:GO for over five years now, and which isn't that long. I mean, some people have been playing a lot longer than that, but um, I've got all these. Whenever you get up to a certain rank or so many experience points or whatever, you get like a at the end of your match, you'll get like a weapons case. Which is like a, it's basically a case that that can be unlocked, and it and it might have ten different. It'll have one gun or one skin for a gun in it, going from anything from it's common to rare, just kind of like magic cards. You know, you get a booster yeah. pack, and it, you know, it's it's a, and so you have to pay for the key to open it. So I never did that. I'm like I'm I'm a gamer, but I'm not I'm not an in game. I don't buy add ons in games and stuff very often. And so I just I just sort of and I never traded them away. So I have weapons cases from over five years for over five years in in my CS:GO uh, um, whatever it's called, like my storage unit <laughs> in, in in digital land or whatever. And so I was looking at the prices of them because it tells you the price on the market. Yeah. Uh, and so like some of these weapon weapons cases, I just looked at one one of my first ones I got. It's like ten dollars. That's without the key, so I could sell it on the market for ten dollars and get ten dollars of Steam cash. Wow! So I have probably about thirty six cases. I don't think they're all ten dollars. Uh, I think some of them are probably a couple bucks or whatever. Some of the lower end ones are maybe a dollar, dollar fifty. But I was thinking about just selling all of it and just having this big pile of Steam, Steamy cash. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and uh, and either buying some skins or. Or buying some other games on Steam, but um, oh, that's I was, uh, cool. I, well, I wonder. Yeah, and I was just wondering what our you know listeners would would want me to do. I mean, do they want me to just collect the money, or should should I buy another game, or should I just invest it into into? Because I'm really conflicted. I don't. Yeah. I, need, I just kind of need an objective opinion. Should I buy PUBG, or should I buy some awesome skins for my M4? Yeah, well, you know, and um, and I know there's some like crypto investors out there who uh, who you know could probably give you some advice about uh, you know playing on the in the market with it. Oh yeah. So like like maybe holding on to some like some of the older yeah. cases and just like letting them like ripen. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, so what what yeah what, that's what I've been up to. What what have you been up to, man? Well, I you know I uh, I, I did a I did a, a a realm push last night. Mm. That um, that uh, to get to level three hundred and 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 you'll remember when I hit two fifty a couple of weeks ago, I uh I I nuked my Baldric trying to enchant it. 
Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, and so somebody somebody gave me their their two hundred and fifty Baldrick, and oh, and nice. pre enchanted, so I didn't I didn't nuke it. I was like fantastic, and so I got my level three hundred Baldrick last night, and I actually ended up on like level three hundred seven or something. But I got my level three hundred Baldrick, and and I started to enchant it, and you know, uh, first cast went great. Uh, put some. You know, put some, uh, uh, you know, like the the empower spell into it so that I'd I'd be stronger, and then I nuked it on the second cast. No, dude. Yeah. And it's really sad because it's uh, I, it's it, the three hundred ball is like this orange, which goes with my style a lot better than the green did. So now I'm still wearing the two fifty ball trick and um, trying to decide whether I'm going to beg for someone to give me theirs, <laughs> or or just wait till three fifty. <laughs> I wonder if they changed the possibility of nuking Baldrick's because that seems like what well, the it yeah. seems like you, you're really 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 unlucky or maybe they did change the you know I don't know yeah I don't chances. know I, and and what, what's really uh, what's really funny is I have this magic shield um, that my wizard really can't use because it it does affect the the uh, the chance of casting successfully it, it messes with that um and so my, my wizard can't really use it but uh but i tried enchanting it and it's a magic shield so it resists enchantments and so i had really had to push with the spells to get it and i landed four enchantments on that thing which is you know really the highest number that i can go um with my character it's like how am i able to you know enchant fully enchant this shield that resists enchantments and, and not my stupid Baldric. Uh, but maybe but, Baldrics are more sensitive since they're basically like the culmination of all your work. They're more sensitive <laughs> to enchantments. They're that, like, that could be. That definitely could be. Uh, but otherwise, have, I've been. Maybe they have souls. Right. <laughs> well, for the, uh, for the past two weeks, uh, no, past week, sorry, I have been utterly obsessed and addicted to smooth McGroove. So oh, you, thank you for you, wasting my life. I'm sorry. And, no, he's fantastic. He's amazing. And, um, and I like logged on and I'm like, Oh, this is great. And like, he hasn't been active for like a year or so. Um, did you watch his video about him? Like not being active? I started, I, I wasn't, uh, I, I didn't have time I to st- finish it. I'm going, I started um, it too. It was like, I got five minutes in. I'm like, I don't know you and I don't really care. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I actually did care, but you know, it's, it, it's a very long video and but not enough. That's the most kind of, I did care too because I started watching. Yeah. It. Well, yeah, that, that's, that's always the question. I was like, I'm interested to finishing it. Uh, but it's, it is a, it is a lot of philosophizing at first. Yeah, and, well, and the th- which, the which about- I'm, you know, I'm fine, you know, I'm fine with, and I, I probably will finish it. But yeah, I was like, oh, the whole time I was sitting there, I was like, I could be watching this, or I could be listening to him sing the opening theme to Chrono Trigger, <laughs> and Chrono Trigger <laughs> music is going to catch me every single time. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, dude, I, I, he's he's talented, and oh uh, yeah, he's really good. And I guess the first theme I heard, I don't know why I stumbled, how I stumbled across it, but I think it was that guy, it was the Guile theme. Yeah. And I, you don't have to tell you about Street Fighter real quick. I remember when I was a very little boy, uh, I was, uh, there was a Kroger's down the street from our house and myself and my older brother, I mean, it's still there. Like we'll go there occasionally when I'm visiting my family and, uh, <clears throat> this Kroger's, but they had a little cubby area with with arcade games, and and so my my older brother and I would go with my parents shopping, and and I remember we'd always get asked for a quarter to go play the video games, and and one day they had Street Fighter two, and it became like a tradition for me and my older brother to play Street Fighter two and this little arcade, and so every time we go, you know, we love to go shopping, and then we'd get a quarter and we'd go, and we'd we'd fight each other or we'd play the computers or whatever. And, and so all those themes from street fighter two and all the characters, they really hold a special like place. Cause I mean, I, I was a little boy such that like, it was kind of hard for me to reach the controllers kind of, you know I mean? I wasn't 
and I mean, and so, and so, especially like, and I remember Guile's theme was my favorite. And so yeah. to hear Smooth McGroove do it and not just do it, but like, and I guess that was what, kind of what I was talking about in the last episode, you know, hearing somebody redo a song that you liked initially, but they're able to emphasize some of the best parts of the song. And so they take it from just this, you know, uh, MIDI level, uh, or you know maybe only four parts to the to the song, but but the, you know like it's smooth McGrew. I mean he's got like all these different parts and his harmonies are wonderful and and it's really man it it, it makes it pretty awesome. <laughs> like, yeah, and so I don't know the guy yeah, really... is my favorite. But yeah, yeah. And so like uh, like one thing I found I found interesting, you know, is like uh, especially when he's doing the NES themes is you know the NES of course we had three sound channels and. The, the sound effects channel, you know, we can put in drums, but, you know, he's doing these eight part versions of this song. And so he is, I mean, he's, he's very much expanding the harmonies of it quite a bit and, and making the song a lot fuller. And I, I really like it. I, I, I think I've run across him before, but I didn't watch it because I typically do not like acapella stuff on YouTube. It's just, I, I'm just in general averse to the whole genre. Uh, but, but this stuff I really like. And, and, um, and of course we made one of his albums, our soundtrack of the week, uh, last week. And I am looking forward to listening to actually to a lot more. It was, <laughs> he's a lot of fun. Yeah. He was impressive. What about that? What about that little kid that does the, uh, the Mortal Kombat? He oh, the, the that, no, that guy's, that guy's amazing. That kid's amazing. I think I think we should put them side by side. It's uh, I wonder if he does the Mortal Kombat smooth McGroove. I tried I, I tried to look for a Mortal Kombat um, thing. I, I didn't I didn't run across one. If he did it, I just didn't run across it. But I don't think so. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, I, you know, it's. I guess they're still working back there. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to say because. Oh. You know, drum is close to my heart, and I just hope they don't find any. I mean, I hope they are able to fix him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <sighs> Should we go get a thank you, like a, a get well soon card for him? Well, I mean, let's you know that that's a good idea, but let's make sure he doesn't turn into a black hole first. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, I guess that would have been a waste of money. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Mm. Um. Hey, uh, I don't know if you saw this. Did you see Steve Ditko died? No. Yeah. The Spider Man. The Spider Man guy. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it, he actually did. He actually uh, uh, illustr- uh, I mean, created the the illustration for a, a lot of the uh, the characters that I really love. Um. Spider-Man being a, a, a really big one, uh, of course, but I've always been, I mean, even before the movie came out, I've been, always been a big Doc Strange fan and, um, in from, you know, he's always co-created, you know, uh, credit as co-creator with Stan Lee. But as I understand it, uh, Dicko did, did most of the creation on that one. And, um, really it did, uh, he did the question, which is, I, I I think one of the mo- more interesting DC characters that I, I think is is pretty underused. Uh, I always I always enjoy him, but yeah, he's uh he was a he's a he was a uh, kind of a a big name. So so he actually did one of one of my very favorite illustrations, and it's one of those that you re- come across in a comic, and and it wasn't even very prominently featured. I I just it was. It just impacted me, you know, mm-hmm. and it was it was it was kind of prior to Gwen Stacy or or Mary Jane when okay. when he was kind of you know he was kind of flirting with Betty Brant a lot and and they kind of had a on again off again type of relationship uh, and of course it, you know a Spider Man and so it, you know everything is gets interrupted because of super villains um, and of course he can't tell that to, to Betty or anything but there's there's this one part where it's like they're 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 parting ways you know for good 
And and the way that Coat illustrated it was them in, in opposite corners of the frame kind of turned away from one another. And you had like this ghostly figure of Spider-Man between them with his hands outstretched, like pushing them away from one another. Yeah. And it was just this fantastic image that... I, I mean, it was—it's was just this wonderful emotional part of the comic book, where you know, especially in those early days, and Pete just had the worst luck, you know, <laughs> worst problems with relationships. Yeah, I just everything was everything was going against him all the time. And, and it, and it wasn't simply like, it wasn't simply like, you know, Hey, there's a super villain and he's strong. It's, you know, the death of his uncle, um, uh, uh, later the death of Gwen Stacy, like at one point, like Doc Ock and Aunt May get engaged and like, he's trying to beat up Doc Ock and his aunt like gets a gun and shoots at Spider-Man, you know, cause that's her man. And, wow. and it's crazy stuff like this, like all the time. And it's like every time the other people at his school are like, oh, let's, you know, Pete's not a bad guy. Let's give him a chance. You know, something happens. He's distracted by something. He has to leave because of some reason. And everybody turns against him again. And, and it was just in the middle of all of this. And you're, you feel so bad for Peter. And that image just really kind of just stood out to me. Um, it, it's, it's one of those, one of those images that, that just, that's really made an impact on me. Uh, and, and I just really love it. And, and so between, yeah. between stuff like that and, and Dr. Strange is one of my, one of my very favorites and, um, and stuff like that. It's, it's, yeah, he was, you know, he, he's definitely up there in, in, in the, you know, those influential names in comic book history. Yeah, man, it's kind of weird because you don't really think about these kind of, these people until they, until they pass. You yeah. know, until you hear about them passing and you hear what they did. And, uh, but that's a huge, you know, I was a big Spider Man fan as well. I had I collected a lot of comics, um, when yeah. I was a kid. And so that's, that's really sad because that was, pretty awesome outfit and also yeah it's a great design you know, well and, and and what he's doing you know it's like it's just it's it's almost like yeah it's the illustrations of his, of his battles and of him flying through the city and it's that's kind of the biggest part of spider-man's character and so uh you know it's, it's so memorable and that's kind of I don't know. He's a very he's, he was a great a great hero, and so uh, yeah, sad to know that about his creator. Yeah, for sure. Well, and and in hearing about in hearing about Dico's death, I you know I, I really got nostalgic, and so I pulled out um a, 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 a Spider Man NES game and started playing it. Okay, and Is it um, awesome. That it was probably a mistake. It was probably a mistake playing it. It's uh, Spider Man Return of the Sinister Six. Uh, which, you know, is promising. Sinister Six was, Six was always kind of a cool concept in, in Spider-Man. You know, they, they really, uh, they, you know, they were trying to lay groundwork in, in Amazing Spider-Man 2, the movie, for Sinister Six, but they just did it in a very poor, that whole movie was just very poorly done. Um, yeah. and they, and the, the setup for that was, was just not very good, but, you know, it was, I, I, you know, reading the comics, whatever, Whenever they would do like the Sinister Stick story, I I thought it was kind of fun. So I was like, hey, you know, this this looks really good. The graphics look really good. Um, let's check this out. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that. I actually have some better Spider-Man games for later systems, but yeah, this is the kind of the one I chose to play, and that yeah, that wasn't a good decision. I'm sorry, man. Yeah. What so, happened? Well, I do you think they're ready? Well, okay. Let, I tell you what. Let me. Um, I need to go to the can real quick, and if I guess it's only been like twenty twenty five minutes. So, all right. Well, I, I let's talk about the game a little bit. Are you sure? Yeah. Because I mean, we, we can hold off on it. Why not? Uh, let's do it. So I'm gonna run to the can, and then I'll come back, and we'll chat about Spider Man: Return of the Sinister Six. Sinister Six. 
Sinister Six. It's kind of tough to say. I need to go to the bat. Sinister Six. I'm going to go to the restroom. Okay. Hey, it's Kai here. We recently finished our latest EP, Quest of the Dragon Warrior. It's an electronic tribute to Dragon Warrior and the amazing music that game gave us. We're really excited about how this music came out, and we want you to have it for free. If you go to technofunkboy.com slash dragonwarrior and sign up for our weekly newsletter, you'll get the songs to download and keep for free forever. That's technofunkboy.com slash dragonwarrior, or check the show notes for a link. Okay, any words since I was gone? Well, no, I, other than the the assistant came out and said the the blendimator was was coming along nicely. Oh, good. That's good. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess there's um So, yeah, uh Spider-Man. Spider-Man Return yeah. of the Sinister Six. Yeah. So, okay, so I should first of all I I should have been I, I should have known. Um I should have known just picking it up that it was not going to be good. So you picked this hold on, let's rewind a second. You picked this out of nostalgia for at the passing of Right. Nostalgia um, for Spider Man, not for this game. I hadn't played this game before. Right, right, right. For the so so you wanted just to kind of immerse yourself in some Spider Man. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. You wanted to be covered in his webs. <laughs> and wrap yourself in them. It, pretty much. Pretty okay. much. That's weird. So uh so my first clue should have been on the cover. Uh with the publisher. Uh oh. Which is the notorious LJN. 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 They did a lot of licensed games, and they weren't good. They were not good. I I think uh, they yeah they, I, I, they they might be the most notorious of of like Nintendo publishers, just because they put out. Such garbage. I, I'd be just over and over and over again. Um, you know, Jaws, Karate Kid, Back to the Future, uh, stuff like that. It, <laughs> you know, okay, okay. So if you if you watch Angry Video Game Nerd, I've heard of him. Yeah, which you know. Uh, is not necessarily a recommendation for his channel. He is funny, but there's also very much a language warning on that. But if you watch Angry Video Game Nerd, most of the time he's angry about LJN, or at least a good percentage of the time. They just they they did really horrible video games. Um, this came out in late '92 for the NES. Now, in context, the SNES came out a year earlier than that. So this was super late in the NES life cycle. Uh, and so, you know, it, this was the point where like people who were making Nintendo games like really knew the system well and were able to turn out some really cool stuff out of it. Uh, ex- except apparently LJN. Um, Oh no. The the first thing the first thing to note is as long as you don't die, a, like a casual playthrough of this game is like 15 20 minutes. It's it is ridiculously wow. short. There are 6 levels, each for one of the sinister 6. Um good points about it is that you uh there's there's quite a bit uh, uh that there's like each level definitely has a theme to it. You know, based on which of the villains that you're going to play, uh, play, play against. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, each each boss definitely has its own style. So, you know, Electro is, 
you know, the whole level has, has a lot of electricity stuff in it. Um, you know, Vulture is, is more, much more flying stuff, uh, in that sort of thing. And so each, each, each boss has a gimmick, which is good. Um, another good point is that the move set that Spider-Man has is very broad. You can, you know, you can jump, you can jump kick, you can punch, you can shoot your webs, you can swing can you, on web. You can, can you jump punch? No. Okay. What? Uh, yeah. Well, okay. We're getting, we're getting to that. <laughs> Okay. You can also uh, climb up some walls, but the problem is, is that like each of these moves are very particular on how you do them, and so you can't, you can't like be in the middle of a jump and then punch in midair. It's like no, we're jumping now. You know, you can't, oh, okay. you, you can't, you know, shoot your webs in the middle of a jump. Everything is very particular. You can't run and punch really well. You know, if you're running, you're running. You can't attack. You have to kind of stop and attack. Um, if you, you, you have some control over your jump, except about halfway through it, when all of a sudden you get the falling animation and you fall straight down to the ground. You know, even if you were on a trajectory, you all of a sudden go down, straight down, and you can't control a fall. And, oh man. And so the, the control, okay. And, and then, and then first of all, um, B is jump and A is attack. Who does that? Especially this late in the <laughs> NES cycle. Who does that? <laughs> Why would you do that? That's, that's like a no brainer. This stuff that, you know, you, we've already established that A is jump, you know? <laughs> Oh my goodness. And so you're fighting against your instincts the entire time. And the hitboxes are really wonky. I was fighting against Electro. Um, and I did this jump kick right into his face. And it didn't hit. And oh I was like, goodness. where exactly is this hitbox? You know, it, and so it, it, it's, it's really, really, really difficult to control. Uh, I, uh, I, you know, we're going to post a video of this because I've recorded some of, some of my gameplay on it, but like, there's, there's this one part where these rats are coming at you and you're trying to climb on this, on this chain and you can't really jump and then grab the chain. You've got to grab the chain from the bottom and you have got to be on this particular pixel to grab the chain. Oh. And meanwhile, these two rats are running back and forth and you, and it's really tough to hit them. And so you finally get on the chain. Now, if you go too far up, if you like hit the top of a ladder or a chain or something, you just fall. And remember, you can't control yourself when you're falling. So you're going to fall to the bottom. You can't re-grab it. You're going to fall to the bottom. And the rats have respawned if you've killed them. And so it's oh stuff like goodness. this over and over and over again. And it's so sad because the game looks really nice. Um, you know, besides uh, on the graphical stuff, the, the, the only really problem with the graphics is that a lot of times you don't know what's a platform and what's just background decoration. Because a, a lot of times they use the same colors, they use the same graphics, but at one part of the level you can stand on it and the next part of the level you can't, uh, which is really irritating. But besides that, the graphics are pretty cool. You know, Spider-Man is very, the, the colors on Spidey is very vibrant. Uh, all the villains, they, they did really, really well. Electro looks great. You know, it looks like the old school Electro graphics. Um, you know, uh, Mysterio looks really cool. Um, and they, they have kind of a cool gimmick with him where you have to fight him and then you realize he's an illusion of himself. And so you have to find him again and fight him. And, you know, so, so they've, they've obviously like paid attention to the comics. Uh, but they just put no effort at all into gameplay. Uh, no, uh, no effort into music. There's only two, two stage musics. There's no boss music. There's, there's the, there's the, uh, the opening. The title screen music, and then there's two 
two themes for stages. There's six stages, but two themes that it just bounces back and forth between them. And that's it. Um, if you, if you beat the game, you just have a still image of like Spider-Man winning. And so <laughs> it's just like, Hey, so, so th- they made it look cool so they could sell it. Cause they knew that that's what people were. Oh, that's, see. and that's L and that's LJ into, I mean, that's, that's what they did. You know, it's like, let's put, there's put something they know on the cover. Let's put an image on the back. That looks cool. That way you buy it. And, and that's it. Um, and, and a lot of times they put in like really, like, I, I mean, my biggest frustration with Jaws and, you know, Jaws is like a, like a, um, a guilty pleasure for me. But one of my big frustrations with Jaws is there's so many good ideas that are not, uh, that are not developed. And so it's like, well, that's a really good idea. Where, where do you go with it? Nowhere. And it's the same, <laughs> it's the same thing with Spider-Man. It's like, Hey, we have this great move set. Now let's put some effort into making it easy to use the move set. No, that's too much work. We we spent all our money on the actual moves, you know. And so and the artists yeah, right. to draw the pictures. Yeah, and, and so like if you are standing right next to a, a villain, it is almost impossible to hit him. Uh and, and a lot of them stand on like really narrow platforms, so you can't like get some distance, you know, you can't back up a little bit and punch him in the face. Uh, and so you're trying, you're standing right beside him and your punches, uh, and, and the- okay. So this is one of the good ideas of the game. The, um, you know, the, just touching an enemy does not hurt you and it does not hurt the enemy. You can only be hurt by attacks. And I really like that, you know, cause it never made much sense to me. Like in Contra where you just, your toe touches the head of a bad guy and you die. You know, right, right. So, so this was a really good idea. So, like, you've got to connect with a punch, and they have to connect with a punch or a bullet or something to hurt you. You can walk right through them, but you know that that just brings in hitbox problems because I'm trying to get the tiny hitbox of my punch to connect with their tiny hitbox that doesn't make any sense. And I'm on this this platform, and we're just swinging at each other, and neither one of us are connecting, and it's just super frustrating. So, uh, yeah, um, yeah. Unfortunately, you know, I was I was I picked up this game just like, oh, let's bask in the in the artistic glory of Steve Ditka for a while, and <laughs> it's just, yeah, it didn't it didn't work at all. You just started hating Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, I, it's just it's it's this it's this just n- knowledge that I've played good Spider-Man games before. There are good Spider-Man games and this is not one of them. And in the character, you know, the, uh, okay. Up until, up until the first movie came out, the Sam Raimi movie, you yeah. know, it was one of those things that it's like, they kept trying to put Spider-Man in stuff. And, and a lot of it was just really bad. And it was such a shame because Spidey was su- is, is such a great character. And finally, the Raimi movie came out. And okay, yeah, yeah, it's a little campy, but it was a good film. And you finally got a sense of Spider-Man. And, and that was such a like triumphant moment where you're like, yes, we, we finally got Spider-Man right on, on something that's not j- just simply the comics. Yeah. No, I remember that movie. That was a, it was a fun one. Yeah. Oh, and and the second one came out and it was glorious. And the third one came out and it kind of sucked. What was the third one again? Is that the one with Sandman? And- yeah, they just put tried to put too much in it. They tried to do Hobgoblin, Sandman, and uh, and Venom. I think it was. Um, or yeah, that was too much. It was yeah, it was just way way too much. And um, I I also I did not like the Amazing Spider Man films. The first one was okay. Um, the second one, I really liked what they did with Electro, but besides that, it was a pretty, pretty, um, pretty bad film. Uh, I always, I didn't mean to review all the Spider-Man films, but <laughs> Homecoming, look, Homecoming, very good. Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man 2, very good. You can ignore the rest. You're welcome. Done. <laughs> and that is the Techno Funk Boys review of Spider-Man. I don't the- know. I don't know why these episodes are so long. We just come in and it's like, <laughs> what do you think of this? It's terrible. <laughs> It's great. Whatever. Maybe we, should, maybe we should do that. Have a section where we just like go off and just like do quick reviews of like 
a bunch of different <laughs> genres. <laughs> like now, literature. Okay, <laughs> let's let's hit it. Spider Man One, Green Goblin, amazing. You know, Spider Man, very good. Number two, Doc Ock, one of the best, one of the best supervillains in film history. Three, they just tried too much. They tried to make okay. In three, they tried to make Sandman sympathetic. And he was never sympathetic in the comics, at least none of the ones I've read. He's always just a thug. And they tried to make him sympathetic while trying to do all these other plots at the same time. And it also had, like, you know, cool Peter who like with the slick back hair. And that was stupid. You know, about my thing is, is if I'm making a movie and somebody says, bring, you know, we're going to have three villains in this movie. I'm going to be like, heck no, we need one villain. Right. Maybe well, one and a half. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I think I think that goes back and and um and I really might be mistaken here, but I, if, if somebody can think of something earlier than this, then by, by all means, uh, let me know. But I think it was Batman Returns that really started the two villain in a movie theme. But it was cool in that one because Catwoman really isn't a villain. She's not an ally really, but she's also not a villain really, and so you can have her. And, and the complexity of her while doing the penguin at the same time. But then, um, but then the bad Batman movies started up and every single one of them had two villains. Um, you know, but, but Spidey one and two kept the one villain th- theme and they were great. And, um, and that was actually one of the problems with, um, with, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2 is they explain the origin story of something like six villains. And it's like, why, why are you doing that? You know, uh, uh, we, we're assuming that we want the series to continue and you right. just cut major plots out of so many characters. You know, it's like they, they, they did a uh, Vulture's origin story without even really dealing with Vulture at all. And then we see, Spider-Man Homecoming, and we see how cool Vulture can be. And it's just like, ah, guys, it's a missed opportunity. Don't do that. Quit quit trying to pack too much into the movie. Just make sure what you've got is good. Yeah, and I I, I think that is a it's a constant flaw in <laughs> in especially newer movies and especially superhero genres, is trying to pack too much into too little of space. It's right. like you know, because 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 people don't Plots aren't really what interest people. Plots are what people can talk about in terms of, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean it's, it, but it's only one aspect of the the film. The other aspect is is characterization. You know, yeah. If 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 we're not into your characters, if we don't understand them, if you haven't given them enough screen time or whatever, right? No one's going to really care about the plot or how many villains you fit in or how many big battles you fit in, despite what your whoever your scientists, you know, your sociologists are telling you what you you know what the perfect mixture of because i'm sure they're looking at that kind of stuff you know they're not doing this in a vacuum yeah. they're, they're they're getting input they're getting uh you know and somebody's telling them you know you really could probably use another villain there's just not a lot going on here i mean well, yeah. I, I, I just that really freaks me out because i'm like it i don't know Sorry. Well, and and i think i think it can be i mean it, and it a lot of it depends on the strength of the filmmaker and so like the perfect example of that is Infinity War. Have you seen Infinity War yet? I actually, I have. You have. Okay. Mm-hmm. You, you, you're doing that tone of voice that you're about to disagree what I'm about to say, but I'm going to say it anyways. Say so, it because I might not disagree. You have five gazillion characters in that movie. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I connected with most, if not all of them. Mm-hmm. And I did too. I, and I, I was super impressed because, because, you know, my, my initial thought is, you know, like, like with the Spider-Man three is that you're just trying, you're trying to pack too many characters in and that's the problem. But in Infinity War, they proved me wrong. It's like, no, if you're a good enough storyteller, you can hold it together and you can make us, you can make us be intrigued by the bad guy while you know, while really rooting for five gazillion good guys and advancing the plot of all of them while connecting with us. And I thought I was like, I was super impressed with just that aspect of it. Well, they did something right. I mean, that they hit on a formula a, a long time ago, which is which is pretty 
it's pretty cool. And I think that's actually I th- I think as time goes by, I wonder if the whole Avengers saga you know, it it definitely it won't get close to Star Wars in terms of it's it's you know, Star Wars was the first time there was a space trilogy, you know, that and and it, it's just Anyway, you can't touch yeah. that. But I think as the years go by, people will look back on it and they'll say, "Holy cow, you know, this this entire story was was sh- spread out over, you know, whatever 10 years or however long. I mean, since Iron Man 1." Yeah. I mean, you have Nick Fury in 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 I think the original Iron Man. Yep, yep, he and was. then and and then it's like you go from there and, and and you've had I mean, stuff like and I don't think they knew that was the kind of cool part is you – they didn't know, oh, we're you know we're going to bring in you – know, they didn't know the role that like um, Guardians of the Galaxy you know, was going to have. Right, yeah. That, but that ended up being you know Guardians of the Galaxy – I think you told me before I saw Infinity War, you were like, you need to watch this movie, this movie, the, yep. you know, these movies. I did not watch Black Panther. I still haven't okay. seen it yet. But oh, I don't think good. I needed yeah. to. I don't think I needed you to. Did, yeah. yeah, you don't need to, but you, you, you want to because it's really good. It's, it's very a good. good. One. Yeah. So 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 I need I still need to watch that. But 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 I I had watched the Thor movies. Yep. And I had watched all the Avenger movies and I'd seen you know but and, you know I'd seen a Hulk movie here and a, you know I've seen all the Iron Man you know you know I had enough of the mythos in place so that when Infinity War came out I was like holy cow. These people have basically turned big screen like movies into like a- a episodic TV events. Yes. Yes, so- yes, that's exactly it. And and I and that's uh what what Marvel is doing and what Netflix is doing. And when I say Netflix, I also mean like Amazon Prime and YouTube now and everybody's kind of getting into it is is doing bigger stories. You know, that's not that's not can't be contained in in two and a half hours. And I really do think that's changing the, the, the film landscape. And Anla and I were talking about this today. Um, the trouble is a lot of people are trying to do this and they're not doing it well. So like I, uh, Michael Bay is trying to do a shared universe for Transformers. And that's why we're getting the Bumblebee movie coming out. But. Even then, those are coming out like three, four years apart from one another. They're, now they're making a ton of money, but they're but he's not he's not bringing the story together. He's just doing different adventures from the same characters. Uh, Star Wars is trying to do it, and they're running into major problems. Uh, DC just belly flopped, you know, their series. And I say I say that as somebody who really, really did enjoy. Uh, Justice League recognized that it, that it was a seriously flawed film, but did enjoy it. But they, I mean, they took a running leap into the shared universe pool and belly flopped, and now they're on the sidelines, you know, with a sore stomach. Yeah. I really like that analogy, by the way. <laughs> but, sidelines with a sore stomach. Yeah, after big it's, all, belly it's, all, flop. it's all red, you know? <laughs> He's yeah. just going, oh, you know? <laughs> so Why didn't I go for the dive? <laughs> Dude, you know, and I think that's it, though. Just to take the analogy, like, one step further, they get scared. Like, they're in the air, and they're like, I'm going to do this move or whatever. They needed to dive. They need to be confident. Yep. You need to just dive into it. I think Marvel did that. And then, but Justice League, everybody else, like, they, they couldn't f- figure out what they were going to do. And they just, yeah, they, they ended up going spread well, eagle against flat right. surface. Now, the, the, well, the problem with Justice League is Zack Snyder knew what he was going to do. And Warner Brothers didn't like it. And mm-hmm. and so Zack Snyder had multiple movies planned out. Um, and, uh, there, you know, there, there's some hints to that online that, that he's given that um, – that that you know he had he had everything planned he was putting he put things in batman versus superman that would play out in like i think he said justice league 2 you know and so he had a vision but then warner brothers didn't like the vision and they're sitting there going you know hey i know you want to do a justice league movie and introduce a bunch of heroes and villains and a whole universe but can you keep it under 2 hours it's like what kind you know that's that's not I mean that used to be the thing. But we're you know we're in the age now where we binge watch a Netflix series that's 5 hours long. And yeah. that's our story. 
You know, yeah. we're not we're not worried about two hour time limits anymore. Um, and and so yeah, that that whole fiasco I think was a lot of people with different visions of what they wanted to do con- colliding with one another, and they just made a mess mess of it. So. Um, that's my, that's my Zack Snyder, Warner Brothers rant for the moment. Um, I'm really, I am hoping that James Wan can kind of set things aright with Aquaman. I, I really do like James Wan a lot. And so, um, I'm glad we're talking about retro games on this retro gaming podcast. <laughs> well, we talked about a retro game that you didn't did. really care for at yeah, all. Yeah, I don't, I don't really want to talk about it anymore. Oh, like, I'm God. done talking about this game. Ah, uh, sh- no, man. Now, now you got me wanting to binge watch some stuff, man. I know, um, I know. Uh, uh, hey, is that uh, is that Doc? Look, yeah, it looks like looks like he's come back. I'm I'm, hey. I'm, I'm I'm a little more optimistic. Hello, hey 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 everybody. Hey, hey, I just wanted to say um, thank you for your patience, and um, we were able to get the Blendimator situated. Now, what I'm gonna have to ask you to do is be very gentle with Mister Drum here. He's a uh, as you see, I've activated him, and he's uh, he's Quasi functional. Why don't you say hello? Uh, oh, come on. Uh, hello. You, you, you could do it. There, there you go. Patting on oh, the back hey, there. That's great. Drum, sweet. Oh, oh, so we gotta hug. be gen- oh. we gotta be gentle with them. Um. All right, yeah, Doc. Yeah. I, okay, yeah, Stephen. Please stop hugging him. Please. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me let me ask you, Doc, because there's a murderous robot on the loose that is intent on on fighting drum mm. um is that going to be good for him well i would recommend that he refrain from any kind of um epic battles uh for at least two weeks at least two wow. oh two weeks okay yeah i think we can avoid murder for two weeks so so i might suggest uh submerging in him in some kind of uh non aqueous solution um possibly during the night to prevent okay. any kind of uh, assassination attempt or uh, ambush. He also, um, I've retrofitted his um, quadrilators with a little bit of a techno funk babble, and it should be, um, he should be able to defend himself with a, an electronic pulse. Oh, wow. Um, so in case something does happen. So I, I would just keep an eye on him, keep the murderous robot that might be, I know Murd is out there, you know, I've been listening to the show, like I said. And, oh, God. Uh, I, I, you know, if you ever catch Murd and bring him in here, I might be able to do some updates and maybe tone down the dials. I know Steven, he said he has access to that. Maybe he can provide me with blueprints. Um, Steven, you do that, right? Uh, um, I, uh, uh, blueprints. I don't know if I have those. I'll, I'll, oh. I'll look for them. I'll look for them though. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's look for those. Um, uh-huh. and then we'll... uh, see. well, regardless, uh, I would just, like I said, please keep him out of, uh, any epic battle for about two weeks. Okay. We can, I think we can do that. Okay. Oh, I'm so relieved. I'm, uh, Me too, dude. Yeah. Oh my goodness. A drum, it's it's great. It's great to have you back. Um, uh, how how are you doing today? I am functioning nearly normally. Oh, I'll take that. I'll take that. Oh, well, let's go get him some chicken noodle soup. I, he can't eat. Yeah, he he can't do that. I said that earlier, but I was, of course, being sarcastic. Yeah, uh, he that's... just needs some oil on his joints and and maybe a. Um, non-biological uh, protein inhibitor um, might be good. All right, yeah, we'll we'll go. We'll get you some oil, buddy. We'll get the good stuff. Yeah, yeah, the uh, synthetic stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, well, I guess I guess it's about that time. Let's um, let's head let's head home. Um, all right, thanks, go, Doc. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, Doc, and oh, yeah, uh, yeah. thank thank all of you for hanging out with us. I I, I know y'all are relieved too. This is uh. Oh, we just got to keep them safe for two weeks, at just least. Two, so. Just two weeks. Yeah. We can do that. We can do that. So, all right. Um, well, uh, please do check out our show note page. We will be uh, putting um, the video, the aforementioned video of Smooth McGroove, and also the video of the Mortal Kombat Kid, because that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, do those. And, those. and that's going to be at Technofunk Boy. 
dot com slash four five. That's the number forty five for episode forty five. Uh, please do share this with friends. I I know I know uh, you know. I know a lot of people are, are, are worried about drum and the merge situation, and I feel like things are coming to a head quickly here. And so please do share this with friends. Give give give, give drum your moral support. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he's going to need it. Yeah, for sure. All right. Sure. Well, that will do it. And thank you for listening. Yeah. Y'all have a good one. Retro Zoo Super Show is brought to you by the Techno Funk Boy. Follow us on Twitter at Techno Funk Boy, on Facebook at the Techno Funk Boy, and sign up for our email list at technofunkboy.com. Also look for us on Spotify, iTunes, and Amazon for music. If you are so inclined, please leave us a five-star rating and review on your favorite podcast catcher. If you are not so inclined, you are obviously some sort of villain trying to conquer the world. Unowned music and gameplay clips are used for educational and critical purposes. Thank you for listening. Keep gaming. Unless you have responsibilities that need to be done at this time, then you can game later.